Hi there, it's Ross from SDS. Welcome back to the channel and video number 92. The next two videos will focus on engines for a change of pace. And this particular video will focus on some of the misinformation uh, continually put forth on the internet about diesel engines. Okay, this slide just shows the uh, differences between the diesel and the auto cycle. And uh, this is theoretical. It's known as the ideal air standard cycle. And uh, basically we have uh, numbers here which represent different uh, parts of the cycle. So one to two is the uh, compression cycle. Heat is added in, uh, in between two and three, same on the auto cycle here. And three and four is the uh, expansion or power stroke cycle. And four back to one is the exhaust cycle. And uh, compression and expansion areas here are known as uh, isentropic processes. And that just means that uh, work transfers without heat or friction. So the important difference uh, between the diesel and uh, auto cycles, uh, most of it is uh, here in the two and three area. On the diesel, of course, you're only compressing air. There's no fuel added until point two here, which is near top dead center. And uh, the compression process, because of the high compression ratio, raises the temperature of the air uh, past the auto ignition point of fuel. So as soon as fuel is starting to be injected here, it starts to burn spontaneously. Whereas on the auto cycle, fuel air mixture is introduced back here and it's compressed. So it's fuel and air mixture and the spark lights it off and then it uh, burns very quickly. Two to three here. Three to four is the uh, expansion stroke or power stroke. That's when uh, chemical energy from the fuel is liberated out as heat and uh, pushes down the piston to give you torque. So another major difference between the diesel and auto cycles is uh, how the air and fuel is mixed. As I said before, on the diesel cycle, we're just compressing air up till here and then fuel is added. That doesn't give very much time for the fuel air mixture to uh, become well mixed. Whereas on the auto cycle, fuel is introduced way back here. It's had lots of time to mix well with the air. And when we light it off with a spark, it burns with uh, good predictability and very smoothly. Whereas on the diesel cycle, the fuel and air is kind of uh, random, uh, randomly mixed. So the combustion process doesn't proceed as smoothly. And uh, that's one of the reasons the diesel makes some noise. That noise is from kind of uneven combustion. And a lot of the work on modern diesel engines with EFI is to uh, improve how the fuel and air is mixed. They do that with very high pressures and uh, aiming the injectors in uh, multiple directions so that it uh, mixes much better with the air. So you get much smoother combustion, uh, more power, less deposit, less smoke. And the final thing we should uh, discuss, which is quite important, is that the uh, diesel cycle is known as uh, an isobaric process. And that's uh, where pressure stays constant. And this is theoretical, of course. Whereas on the auto cycle, it's referred to as isochoric. And that's where the volume stays constant. Of course, these are theoretical concepts but it's a way to show the major differences on how the diesel and auto cycles function theoretically. So here we have a graph of ideal cycle efficiency, and this is theoretical, of course. This is from a paper by John E. Shaw from the Missouri Academy of Science. And uh, we've got compression ratio down here, ideal cycle efficiency here, and one curve for the auto which is the dotted line, and one for the diesel, which is a solid line. And a lot of people may be amazed to see here that the auto cycle is actually quite a bit more efficient theoretically than the diesel cycle. So if we take a 10 to one compression ratio on the auto cycle, the diesel would have to be at 20 to one roughly to meet the same 60% uh, ideal cycle efficiency. So in real life, a diesel cycle because most of the engines have very high compression ratio usually at least 17 to 1 they tend to have higher efficiency than the auto cycle there's a lot of other real world effects that uh, tend to make the uh, theoretical efficiency on this graph uh, not quite reality however in recent times 
the diesel compression ratios have fallen somewhat due to the fuel injection changes and the uh, auto cycle engines have rapidly increased the compression ratio also due to injection changes going to direct cylinder injection versus port injection and now uh, we see some of the very latest auto cycle engines uh, matching or exceeding what the uh, diesels can do compression ratio is almost the same and because the auto cycle is more efficient in some ways uh, some of the new engines which we'll show later are actually uh, very efficient indeed so to demonstrate how efficient modern spark ignition engines can be this photo is courtesy of Toyota and in 2018 Toyota debuted a new line of engines called dynamic force in various different displacements and this is the M20A-FXS it has a 14 to 1 compression ratio and it's 41 percent thermally efficient the highest of any 2 liter engine in the world at this time okay first some fundamental truths horsepower not torque is a measure of rate of work done area under the horsepower curve represents the amount of work an engine can perform in a given amount of time and the diesel cycle is inferior to the auto cycle in both horsepower and torque production per unit displacement and per unit boost pressure so of course today most diesel engines are turbocharged and one of the reasons for that is because they produce very little horsepower and they're fairly lame without being turbocharged uh, I dug up from the archives here uh, some examples of non-turbocharged diesel engines versus uh, spark ignition engines. So here we have some Volkswagen Rabbit engines. Uh, these are both one and a half liter. Both have the same bore and stroke. And the horsepower of the uh, spark ignition engine is 70 at 5,800 RPM. And on the diesel only 48 at 5,000 RPM. And the torque on the spark ignition engine, 83 foot-pounds at 3,000 versus only 59 foot-pounds at 3,000. And for an unfair comparison, here's uh, slightly later engines, 1.6 liter now, both the same bore and stroke again. The horsepower on the spark ignition engine with no boost, 108 at 6100. And the diesel with boost, only 70 at 4500. And torque figure, the same thing again, 101 foot-pounds at 5000 with no boost, and only 96 foot-pounds at 2600 with boost. Okay, so as I said before, diesels run much higher boost pressures generally than uh, spark ignition engines. You can see the typical boost pressures here of a street diesel versus a street spark ignition turbo engine. Okay, for the next comparison, we move into the modern age. These are both uh, very late model BMW 3 liter engines. The uh, B57D30 is uh, diesel, quad turbocharged. The S58 is a spark ignition engine, and you can see the uh, purple graph is the diesel, where the uh, dark blue graph is the spark ignition engine. We have uh, foot-pounds over here, torque, and RPM here. And you can see the diesel produces more torque than the spark ignition engine, but this is due to the fact that it's running about uh, double the boost pressure. One thing to note, however, is how rapidly the torque drops off at high RPM. The uh, diesel is only producing 50 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500, so it's pretty much done at 4,000 RPM, where the torque of the uh, Spark Ignition S58 continues uh, pretty much unabated to 6,000 and only drops a little bit at 7,000. So area under the curve, despite running half the boost pressure on the Spark Ignition engine, is much greater than the uh, diesel running twice the boost pressure. And uh, we'll see the differences in horsepower on the next chart here. So here we see the same BMW 3 liter engines compared again. Uh, in the purple again is the diesel engine, and uh, in the blue is the spark ignition engine. Uh, these are both turbocharged. However, the boost pressure on the diesel is about double on the spark ignition engine. And uh, the horsepower here we can see peaks at about 4,000, about like the torque does on the diesel, and it uh, absolutely plummets by the time it gets to 5,500 RPM is only producing 40 horsepower, while a spark ignition engine is producing over 450 horsepower. And uh, even more telling on this curve is area under the curve here. You can see if we go from 
the top here, across all the way here, the area encompassed by the graph on the spark ignition engine is huge compared to the uh, area under the curve on the diesel engine. And again, the diesel's running about double the boost pressure. Not quite a fair comparison at all. If it was running the same boost pressure as the spark ignition engine, it would be uh, way down here somewhere. So here's another very apples to apples comparison. Here, uh, this uh, 1988 university paper, they discussed taking two diesel engines, quantifying the performance, and then converting them over to spark ignition. And they found that the spark ignition engine had uh, pretty much uh, equal economy and actually produced more power as a spark ignition engine. And uh, you can read the part in red here where they discuss that uh, the diesel is really inferior to the spark ignition engine and it's only suitable for low RPM. So what does this mean in real terms? I tried to dig up an example of uh, real world horsepower and performance, diesel versus spark ignition. Uh, Dan Sheed, a uh, guy that has uh, one of the fastest diesel dragsters in the world, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, 390 cubic inches, 140 PSI boost pressure, apparently 3,000 pound-feet of torque, 2,500 horsepower, best elapsed time in the quarter mile, 6.31 at 226 miles an hour, and an Ecotec funny car, only 134 cubic inches, so one-third of the displacement, apparently runs about half the boost pressure. It's actually quite a bit quicker in the quarter mile at 5.95 and 231 miles an hour. So the lesson uh, here in real world terms, spark ignition engine with one third of the displacement and half the boost pressure produces more horsepower and has more area under the curve than a diesel engine. Okay, this next chart compares specific output between the Sheed diesel dragster and the BMW M12 Formula One engine from 1985. You'll notice that the uh, diesel runs almost double the boost pressure, but the Formula One engine puts out about two and a half times the amount of horsepower per liter of engine displacement. Okay, so this final chart is uh, the real apples to apples. This is comparing uh, a bunch of engines by specific horsepower and torque per unit displacement and per unit boost pressure. So we've got the BMW M12 F1 engine again, a Sheed Dragster, Koenigsegg 1, 5 liter turbo engine, Koenigsegg Jesko, 5 liter, Cummings 5 liter diesel, a modified Cummings diesel, and BMW S58 3 liter SI. So you'll see the figures in red here, which are the high points of each uh, type of engine, spark ignition versus diesel. The BMW F1 engine completely annihilates the Sheed Dragster in specific horsepower per PSI of boost, produces five times the amount of horsepower per liter of displacement per PSI of boost. And on the torque side, the Koenigsegg uh, 1 5 liter engine produces 2.2 times the amount of torque per unit displacement and per unit boost pressure as the modified Cummings 5 liter. And I should mention while I'm here, Koenigsegg Jesko 5 liter produces 1600 horsepower and 1100 pound feet of torque. No production 5 liter diesel comes anywhere close to that. I spent a lot of time compiling this video uh, just to dispel this uh, notion that diesels produce so much torque. Uh, it's only due to high boost pressures, and when you take a spark ignition engine with equal boost pressure, the spark ignition engine totally outperforms the diesel in torque and horsepower. That should be pretty clear by all the examples I've uh, dug up here. So the diesel truck companies love to tell people how much torque these diesel engines make, but they're usually comparing it to a normally aspirated engine, so it's not really a fair comparison. Anyway, diesel trucks are okay for towing your trailer and your race car, but they're uh, not really performance vehicles, so they should probably stop saying that. So this engine you see in the photo here is uh, something I prepared for road racing back in 1992. And uh, one day we had a fellow come out to the track with a diesel Beetle with the boost turned up. And he was going to show us all how fast that was. Uh, didn't quite work out that way. I went by him so fast it was dangerous. He was just a mobile chicane out there. And I've had guys with... Uh, pumped up diesel trucks, try to race me on my GSXR motorcycle. Yeah, they didn't win.
no idea what they were thinking. So I've been turbocharging engines for about 40 years professionally, done everything, uh, including diesels. And this here is my 240SX, which I drove for 17 years. Uh, usually just running an 8 or 9 PSI boost. And uh, one day, many years ago, a fellow came up beside me in his uh, big diesel dually truck, Gale Bank stickers all over it, uh, five inch exhaust, that sort of thing. And he wanted to have a go at the light, so I obliged him and uh, blew him away really badly. Uh, once wasn't enough for him, evidently. He tried for the next two lights as well. Same result. He didn't seem to understand that uh, 700 pound-feet of torque doesn't mean anything. It's horsepower to weight ratio that counts. And with a spark ignition engine and the high rev range, he can leave it in the lower gear, which gives it that torque multiplication, and uh, he didn't really have a chance. He's probably running at least 35, maybe 40 PSI boost by the sound of it. No match for the spark ignition engine, much smaller than his. So as I said at the start, the purpose of this video was to dispel a common misconception that diesels produce more torque and horsepower than spark ignition engines. And uh, even some of the engineering channels that are well respected on YouTube and uh, in print, we see a lot of this uh, same misinformation just parroted. Uh, seems like these people don't really look at any real world examples. They just seem to think that the longer stroke, the higher energy content of diesel fuel that's somehow going to do some sort of magic. But I've uh, tried to explain it uh, factually here, what the difference is between spark ignition and diesel are, and uh, provide these real-world examples showing that uh, the diesel comes nowhere close to spark ignition as far as producing horsepower and torque on an apples-to-apples -apples basis. So that's same displacement, same boost pressure. Uh, we see they fall far short. And it seems... Uh, most of the people doing these articles and videos on diesel engines have uh, no first-hand experience with turbocharged spark ignition engines. They have no clue about uh, how much power and torque they can produce. They've never uh, had a ride in a really powerful turbo spark ignition car. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you back in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.